all this week, I've been sharing my amazing trip down in New Zealand. It feels like I was there just yesterday. And thanks to the time difference, I think I'm still there tomorrow. <laughs> it was an incredible experience that we captured in our series. The Late Show presents Stephen Colbert, the newest Zealander. What a week it's been. The Prime Minister picked me up at the airport. I hung out with Xena Warrior Princess. I played rugby. I made a movie with Peter Jackson. I got drunk and fist fought a hobbit. The only thing I didn't film on my trip to New Zealand was my actual trip to New Zealand on Air New Zealand. In fact, here's me in the airport with my sleep mask, my neck pillow, and my carry on full of invasive plant species. <laughs> Air New Zealand was amazing. And starting in 2020, they'll be offering nonstop flights from New York straight to Auckland. Which reminds me... <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Please remain in your seats as we just hit a small patch of mild product placement. Kia ora, Stephen. We've got some New Zealand fine wine here. Would you like to try the New Zealand red or the New Zealand white? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Try the rosé. <laughs> and while now it's easier than ever to get there, the hardest part is deciding between all the incredible experiences you can have in New Zealand. Tonight, I present my last and perhaps greatest day of all, trying to have every experience at once. Jim? New Zealand. This small island nation is packed with a stunning variety of landscapes. Nowhere else on the planet can you see the Southern Alps, active volcanoes, breathtaking waterfalls, expansive green valleys, remote sandy beaches, and dazzling mountaintop glaciers, all within the square mileage of Colorado. I wanted to experience this natural beauty firsthand and hopefully untap some of my inner rugged manliness. But I'm not a big fan of walking. So I met up with helicopter pilot Choppy, who took me out to explore the majesty of the South Island. Why did you want to be a helicopter pilot? I started flying airplanes. And then I joined um, in New Zealand and flew passenger planes for a while. Like 55 seat of Fokker. Fokker, stay with We can't say Fokker on CBS. It's got two Ks in it. I got two Ks? We're good. I take this little gap on the left. All right. I told Choppy I was up for adventure, so she flew me out to the Kawaro Bridge, the birthplace of bungee jumping. Okay, that's the bungee bridge. Choppy landed on a dime, and I met Henry Van Ash, who, along with A.J. Hackett, pioneered bungee jumping on this very bridge. There are no natural predators in New Zealand, so Kiwis brag that they had to invent their own ways to almost die. Is that it? There you go. There's your feature right there, Stephen. And just cards on the table. I'm uh, not a huge fan of heights. <laughs> um, or drops, really. Um, what's it like? Your head's going to be exploding with excitement, okay. and your heart will be leaping out of your chest with, uh, uh -huh. first of all, fear. Because you're obviously really scared now, which is yeah, I am. natural. I am. I am scared. I am. I'm scared. Will Smith was on the show, and yeah. uh, he bu bungee jumped recently, and he said, I had to do it. I had to overcome my fear. I asked Will about the bungee jumping because I'm going to New Zealand tomorrow and they're trying to get me to bungee jump when I'm down there. And I think I'm you have to. You no, have to. No. Listen, fear is man's greatest poison. Poison, poison. So I headed to the bridge to face my fear. And fear won. <laughs> Suddenly, I was curious about adventures that don't involve plunging into a ravine. So Choppy and I headed back out over the Wakatipu Basin. The thing about New Zealand seems like it just rose out of the sea. There's such sort of vitality in the land. I feel like I have to stay here, and, and, and here I will be a man. How manly do I seem to you, Choppy? I think you're definitely on the manlier side of non-manly. <laughs> so I'm identifiably male, is what you're saying? Correct. Thank you. We landed up at a high sheep station, where I met professional sheep farmer and aspiring tank top model, John Foster. <laughs> to learn how to shear sheep. Good night. Look at that. Perfect. 
Is it always shearing, or do you ever do like a Brazilian waxing? No. No, never wax? It's very hard to actually get hold of the wax afterwards. Okay, how do we do it? So what I'll do is I'll start the hard left, we'll yep. open the fleece up, and then you can shear the last half of the sheep. Give him a handshake. Uh, there you go. You look fabulous. With an important Kiwi skill successfully under my belt, we headed to the rugged and remote west coast of the South Island, where I met Warwick, a wilderness guide, lobster hunter, and I'm pretty sure the tallest guy in New Zealand. So, uh, Warwick, I really love your country, and I'm trying to figure out whether I could be a Kiwi, you know? And what do you do? I'm a wilderness guide. A wilderness yeah, guide? Well, wilderness. there's a lot of it here. What are you gonna do today? What, what are we doing? Diving for a red rock lobster. You're gonna dive for a lobster. Yeah. Quick question, are there sharks out there? Look, there's sharks anywhere in the ocean, but no. I'm not too worried. That's not true. What do sharks eat? What do sharks eat, uh, Warwick? Seals. Okay. You know what you look like, right? With the flippers and the, the outfit, and you know what you look like? You look yeah, like a seal. A seal, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna go out there looking like a seal in shark-infested waters yeah. to grab a, a spiny bug the size of a football, and that yeah. that's... That's a job that that people have down here. Yeah. Uh, I'm in. Why don't, you, why don't you show me how to do it? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. All right. Come on. No, you go on. You show me how, and then I'll I'll be next. Yeah. Go on, man. Woo! This is what I'm gonna do. Compared to hand-fishing lobsters in shark-infested waters, bungee jumping suddenly seemed reasonable. So I sucked it up and gave it one more shot. Are you ready? Yeah, I think, okay. I think uh, this is as close as I'm gonna get. What's your name? I just need you to put your feet here so we can tell you what. Okay. I just thought to myself, what would my good friend Will Smith say? Your job for the human race <laughs> is to conquer the fear that poisons your dreams, Stephen. Let's so go on the other side, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the one. Am I there? A little bit further, please, Stephen. Yeah. Okay. Nearly there. That's awesome. Hands off of this one. Eyes up on the bridge. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Wow, that really looks like I jumped off a bridge. That was actually my showrunner, Chris. He really wanted me to jump, but I really was not interested, so I made him spray paint his hair, dress up like me, and jump instead. Yeah, to hell with that. Instead, Choppy and I flew out to the Southern Alps and up and over the Richardson Mountains. I said, up and over. Okay, this is way closer than I want to be. <laughs> is there some place in this helicopter I could change my underwear? <laughs> so these are all glaciers. There are very few places in the world where you can still see this many glaciers, let alone land on one. So Choppy set us down for a once in a lifetime experience. Choppy, thank you for taking me up here. I mean, it really is a privilege to see your country and to, to be at the top of the world here. And I have to say that it, it's, it's more than beautiful. This experience is absolutely spiritual. Choppy, how long have you been flying up into these mountains with these glaciers? Jeepers, over 40 years now. What was it like 40 years ago? I mean, were there, were there more glaciers back then? A lot more glaciers, and they ran right down into the valleys, but now they've receded back, and then the beaches are falling off, and the sun's mm -hmm. hitting the black rocks and accelerating their demise. Is it bad for me to be up here on it because I'm so smoking hot? <laughs> you know about punches coming, right? I do. My staff wants me to bungee jump. 
I guess they don't understand that if I die, no one has jobs. Because what if something happens to me when I bungee jump? Choppy? I suppose it would have an effect on the bungee jumping company's business for a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? A couple of weeks? Really? That long? Tell me what it's like to do. Because I've already, I've already, I've already t t said no several times. Well, it's sort of like you dive down and you're like, oh, and then you feel the rubber band take your weight and you're like, whoo, 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 that was good. Then you come up again and it goes, whoa. There's no part of that since I was appealing to me. When I get into a, so you feel like, oh, I'm going to die. Correct. Okay. It's the beginning I'm afraid of. It's that first step. It's terrifying. Okay. Okay. Choppy, um, would you mind if I had a moment alone with the glacier? I wanted to say a proper goodbye while I still had the chance. Well, bring a camera. It's a TV show. Come on. <sighs> Here's to you, old friend. We'll see you later on the beaches of Ohio. <laughs> Let's go bungee. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah! Oh my God. Oh my god. Well, that's a wrap for New Zealand. It's the most beautiful country in the world with the nicest people. And gravity works here too. <laughs> we'll see you back in New York. Kia ora. Thank you, Choppy. Thank you to everyone in New